In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. The state line, more than a half a million people have been ordered to evacuate. The National Hurricane Center is warning of an unsurvivable storm surge. We've never heard that term used before. It could reach 30 miles inland. Here is a live look at Galveston, Texas, where the waves are getting larger. The pier out there completely empty as people try to get out of the storm's path. We have team coverage tonight. Our chief meteorologist Chris Holcomb tracking Hurricane Laura's path and timeline. Yeah, and we're watching that system right now. You can see how strong it is, and this is just a, a classic look at a uh, eye wall and a symmetrical look here at the radar image of all the rain in association with it with those outer bands. We're here in Atlanta, not really getting any uh, direct impacts from that right now. Here's a look at the storm. You can see it as it's moving through the Gulf of Mexico. We just got an 8 p.m. advisory in, and the storm is getting even stronger. It now has winds of 150 miles an hour. That is still a Category 4 storm. It if it gets up to 157 or higher, that would then be a category five. It is possible it could do that, but we're not seeing guaranteeing that that will happen. But this is going to be a very strong category four, if not close to a category five storm. You can see it as it's moving up toward the north. Here is the center of that circulation with that eye wall, most of the convection on that northern side of that eye wall, and it's moving up toward the north and also to the west. And we're watching to see if it does what we call an eye wall replacement cycle. Sometimes that would cause it to uh, to maybe lose just a little bit of strength, but we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on that for you tonight. It is right now about 103 miles away from the border here from Texas and Louisiana, the state line right there and the coastline. So here you see Lake Charles. Here you see Houston. Houston looks like it's going to be on the quieter side of the system, but over toward Lake Charles, that's where they're going to be getting most of that wind and most of that rain in this part of the storm right here as it continues moving up toward the north. I want to take you to meteorologist Samantha Moore right now. Sam, we just got that latest update in now showing at 150 miles an hour. You're going to let us know where it's headed. Yeah, and it's going to be incredible, an incredible night for those fo folks, unfortunately. And then Ken Graham was talking earlier today about how we always talk about landfall, but by landfall, half of the hurricane has already moved ashore. So, of course, folks have been anticipating this throughout the day, and it is likely to make landfall, and that would be when the eye wall crosses over the coastline. 
early in the morning, probably at around 2 a.m. their time, at, with 150 mile per hour winds. So that is a strong cap four, like Chris was saying. And then moving up that Texas Louisiana line. So still feeling tropical storm force winds tomorrow afternoon in northern Louisiana and southern Arkansas. And then finally starting to make a little bit more of a turn to the right here, to the east, across into the Ohio Valley. And that's where it is headed as we head towards the end of the week and the weekend. So it will be north of us as we head into Saturday morning, early on in the morning. And that's when we could have some impacts here as we head in through the rest of the day. So we'll be concerned about getting in some windy conditions as well as some poss possibly heavy rain in here as we head into Sunday. Flooding will be a concern as well on Saturday, excuse me. So coming up, we'll talk more about the timing of that and how it could likely impact your weekend. All right, Sam, Chris, thank you so much. Hundreds, meanwhile, of Georgia Power crews are ready to respond when Hurricane Laura hits the Gulf. Georgia Power says it is uh, business as usual this hurricane season, despite the need for additional pandemic precautions. Crews are wearing PPE, masks, and using hand sanitizer to remain healthy. And remember, we can send you breaking weather alerts and updates on Hurricane Laura straight to your phone. Just download the 11 Alive News app. Eight arrests and officers with minor injuries. There was violence in downtown Atlanta as protesters took to the streets for uh, Jacob Blake, who was shot in Kenosha, Wisconsin, by a police officer at least seven times. Blake is now paralyzed from the waist down. Atlanta Police Deputy Chief Celeste Murphy says when officers arrived near Woodruff Park around 8 o'clock last night, the protesters hit him with fireworks and frozen water bottles. One officer was in the midst. Murphy says the crowd seemed to be a younger group, officers not familiar with the organizers. She says APD is ready to respond to anything that may come their way again. We do welcome peaceful protests and hope that we can reach out and work with anybody who does want to do that. This never was pe peaceful, and it's obvious it wasn't intended to be peaceful. A teenager now facing murder charges after protests for Jacob Blake in Wisconsin. It turned deadly last night. Police arrested a 17-year-old in Antioch, Illinois. The video shows he had an automatic rifle. Two people shot to death. Another injured during the third night of violence in Kenosha. Police have not said whether this teen will be charged as an adult. There's now been an arrest in the murder of an 83 year old woman over Mother's Day weekend. Two people have been charged with the murder of Barbara Gibson. Carroll County Sheriff Terry Langley says Andrew James Kennard and Amanda Sperry lived near Gibson. Investigators believe robbery was the motive. We think it's random. I don't even think they knew each other personally. We know they didn't know her and we feel assured she didn't know them. But they did live close enough to know that she lived alone. Police found Gibson inside her home shot to death just before Mother's Day. Sheriff Langley says the suspect scouted out Gibson's home days before the shooting. DeKalb County Police now investigating an early morning triple shooting that left one person dead. Police say the shooting happened around 3.30 this morning on North Indian Creek Drive in Clarkson. When police arrived at the scene, they found three people suffering from gunshot wounds. One man pronounced dead at the scene. Police are still searching for the gunman. And the city of South Fulton is updating its use of force policy. The city council unanimously approved an ordinance that they hope will improve the safety of people in South Fulton as well as police. The resolution bans chokeholds, prohibits officers from firing shots at moving cars, and calls for warnings before a weapon is used along with other changes. The council also approved a policy for the drawing or discharging of an officer's weapon. After beginning the school year virtually, several grades in Georgia's largest school district returned to the classroom today. Joe Hankey learned Gwinnett County parents are split on whether or not to send their children back to class. Gwinnett County Public Schools eased back into in-person classes this morning with students in kindergarten, first, sixth, and ninth grades having the option of returning to their physical classrooms. I just don't think personally the education at home was, you know, as, as good as what he would get in school. Nicole D'Agostino's son, Landon, headed to his first in-person freshman classes today. His third grade sister, Lauren, will be in her classroom next week. So there, there's always some apprehension because you want to keep your children safe and you want to do what's best for them. 
Diagostino says the district's plans for following CDC guidelines put her at ease. Gwinnett published details of safety measures, including new cleaning plans, a mask requirement, one-way hallways, and steps to social distance students. Gwinnett County Public Schools reports 44% of students able to return to a classroom today did. 56% continued digital learning. For K-12, through the same percents are expected to remain online or head back as more grade levels have the option in the coming days. After being at home since March, Diagostino says her children want to be in class. The social component, I believe, is, is huge for the kids, especially teenagers. Uh, just being at home just was starting to wear on them. 52 people signed up to speak at the most recent Gwinnett Board of Education meeting, some approving of plans to resume in-person teaching. Others, including this first grade teacher, were not. I'm scared for my health. I'm scared for my family's health. I'm scared for my co-workers' health. And I'm scared for my students' health. For K-12, 427 Gwinnett County teachers called out today, compared to 547 teachers one year ago. In a statement, a district spokeswoman said our schools did a great job in preparing for the return of the first of our students to in-person instruction, ensuring that their buildings and staff were ready and that they had substitutes ready to provide coverage for the teachers who were out today. 9% of all COVID-19 cases in the state are stemming from Gwinnett County. Gwinnett, with 225 new cases today, there are more than 2,200 new cases statewide. While that downward trend looks good, it is important to note the number of people getting tested also has dropped. We're still seeing about 200 new patients go to the hospital each day for medical care because of COVID-19. And according to hospitals, 19% of their patients are still either COVID positive or suspected of having COVID. Two weeks ago, a video of a dog being thrown up against a wall by her owner surfaced on social media. The Duluth, the Duluth Police Department saw that video, took the dog, and arrested the owner. Now, understandably, residents were outraged by the incident and flooded the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office with concerns about that abused dog. And the sheriff took notice. 11 Alive's Brittany Kleinpeter has a story. A case of dog abuse has neighbors fired up and some wondering whatever happened to this pet. Earlier this month, this video surfaced on social media showing the dog being thrown against a wall outside a Gwinnett County apartment. Authorities tell us the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel has an eye injury, but is okay. The owner arrested, neighbors outraged. Many citizens were contacting Sheriff Conway out of concern for the welfare of the dog. And through that, he made the offer to the county animal shelter to foster her here in the Gwinnett jail dogs unit. The 18 month old dog named Victoria is not available for adoption due to the pending court case. In the meantime, she has a spot in the agency's Operation Second Chance program. <laughs> The initiative allows inmates at the Gwinnett County Jail to train homeless dogs. So rather than being in animal control, just waiting for this legal case to work its way through the criminal justice system, she could be here where she's getting a lot of hands on attention, lots and lots of love and affection, as well as really great obedience training. Victoria's future is still not clear. There is a pending criminal case. Once that's resolved, a judge will decide where the pup goes next. And authorities tell me that Victoria's owner is facing animal cruelty charges. Un unbelievable. I know. Abusing wow, a, a King Charles Spaniel. That is just My goodness. outrageous. Gee. Well, don't forget, uh, we are streaming right now on 11 Live's YouTube channel. If you have something to say, you can subscribe and join in on the conversation <laughs> right there in our community section. We're, we've got more 11 Live news in prime time straight ahead after this break. because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. 
quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, the National Hurricane Center now is updating us with position updates and intensity updates every hour. And as we just told you at eight o'clock, they gave us the latest advisory that now shows Laura with 150 mile an hour winds. That is a strong category four storm. If it got up to 157 or higher, then that would be a category five storm. Here is the system right here. Now, the, we always talk about the center of the storm of it making landfall. And as Sam mentioned a little while ago, it's still going to be causing a lot of impacts in those areas outside of that eye wall and along the coastal region. In fact, we can see that those rain bands and that shield of rain now coming over the coast into Louisiana. And we even have some of these bands that have been impacting much of Louisiana earlier where we had this uh, tornado watching effect and we've had numerous tornado warnings along with this uh, north of New Orleans and near New Orleans and west of New Orleans earlier today. And there are a couple of tornado warnings there right now, but that rain shield is coming in. This is just the beginning of the deterioration process that's going to be taking place along the Louisiana and the Texas coastline during the nighttime hours. There is the center of circulation that is a well-defined eye and you can see all that convection, the very heavy rain and wind along in that eye wall. The worst part of this is it moves up to the north is in that northeast quadrant right here and that's what's going to be hitting mainly the Louisiana coastline. Here's a position update for you. The center of the storm is now just less than 100 miles away from the Texas coastline and the and the uh, Louisiana state line there right there on the border. Lake Charles is really going to be under the gun. If it stays on this path, Houston will have some impacts, but not the bad impacts from it. And we mentioned earlier we have these uh, hurricane warnings in effect here along the Texas and Louisiana coastline and then tropical storm warnings that go over into uh, the Louisiana coastline storm surge warnings warnings as well. And I want to show you more specifically about these storm surges here. Uh, we're talking about and you know, Jeff mentioned earlier how the National Hurricane Center said that some of these storm surges would be unsurvivable if you didn't evacuate. And it's not just on the coast. It can go 30 miles inland as well. And in these red areas right here, this is showing greater than nine feet above ground. That actually goes off the scales. And we're going to be talking about some storm surges there, nine to 15, even some spots, 15 to 20. 20 foot storm surges. That's the wall of water that accompanies the storm as it moves in. So, so much to watch with this flooding, storm surge, catastrophic winds, and damage in association with that. And then we, of course, have to watch the system after it moves inland to see if we would see any impacts as we head into the weekend. Let's go to meteorologist Samantha Moore right now with uh, more information on that track. Yeah, it looks like this is going to continue on that northwesterly path, Chris, and that means it'll make landfall early in the morning. This is the worst time to have a major hurricane coming through your town is in the middle of the night because it's so hard to really keep track of what's going on in the dark. So it's going to continue then on up to the Arkansas-Louisiana line where it'll still have tropical storm force winds. In fact, throughout much of Thursday, it will have tropical storm force winds into early Friday and then moving through the Ohio Valley. So it's going to be to our north as we head into the weekend. So Friday night and Saturday, that's when we could see some impact from Laura and it's basically going to be more moisture could fuel some thunderstorms so we could have some 
very heavy downpours, and we can't roll out a severe storm or so as we head in through the day on our Saturday. So even early in the morning, we could see some storms. So this is what we're thinking in terms of the winds. We're going to see those hurricane force winds moving in, and they're going to be under the barrage of hurricane force winds for several hours overnight as it moves up into Louisiana, into the northern part of the state, up around Shreveport, and then starts to make its way to the east and bringing in some of those strong gusty winds across Arkansas. They could see severe weather there through tomorrow. And then we could have some gusty winds Friday night and Saturday up around 20, even 30 miles per hour, it looks like right now. Heaviest of the rain, they could see over a foot of rain where you see the orange on your map here. And then tapering off as it gets to us. So maybe an inch to an inch and a half of rain expected as we head into the first half of the weekend. So here is what we expect to see in terms of the rainfall. This is our RPM forecast track showing it moving along the heaviest of rain, of course, with that center of circulation. And then as it weekends it gets a little more diffuse but we still could see some very rich tropical moisture pulled in here Friday night this is 730 and we could have some heavy downpours once again on a Friday night possibly like we had last Friday night and then seeing some more heavy downpours as we head into the first half of the weekend. So we'll certainly be watching for that. The thunderstorms we had earlier in Gwinnett, they have died out. We're watching some that have just popped up here uh, near Troop County. So we're going to have to watch for those throughout the next couple of hours as well. So we're looking at those temperatures overnight down in the low 70s. On your wisometer tomorrow, an 8 with a 20% chance of showers during the afternoon and evening hours primarily. So just some isolated stuff. But even though it's isolated, we can still have some heavy downpours with this moist air mass in place. 92 should be our high temperature tomorrow, so it's going to be a hot and humid day. And for the most part, we'll be dry through much of the day, but we do have that 20% chance for showers. So our showers tonight tapering off will be a little bit drier on Thursday, so we won't have the coverage that we've seen in recent days of showers and storms. And then increased moisture from Laura will start us out over the course of this weekend. So we're going to continue to see that as an issue here. So a 20% chance chance of showers and storms on Thursday, 40% chance Friday, 60% chance on our Saturday. That is going to be the stormiest day of the weekend. And then we're back to the normal heat of the day summertime pattern on our Sunday and into the beginning of next week. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of. One of the main issues in any election is always the economy, and we know there are questions about stocks and investing. The closer we get to November, the bell is ringing for all of us. Joining me right now is Ted Jenkins, CEO of Oxygen Financial. And with the election coming, Ted, how should we think about investing our money? Which direction should we go in your estimation? Well, let's talk about both forks in the road, Jeff. You know, if Biden happens to be elected president, I think people can look forward to investing in things like green energy, uh, infrastructure will be really good right now, electric cars will be good, materials, all those things that you're seeing and you heard from the DNC convention. And if Trump does get reelected, I would expect more of the same, Jeff. Uh, technology, social media, of course, banks, defense will all be good. But I want, think one thing people should watch out for at home is that tax policy will not change until 2021 if Joe Biden gets into the president's office. But one of the things he's talking about is raising capital gains tax from 20% to almost 40%, Jeff. And that could cause a lot of wealthy people to sell their stocks before the end of the year. That is something to keep an eye on. So no matter who gets elected here, which investments do the best? I mean, what, what do well, no matter if it's a Republican or a Democrat? Well, I mean, Jeff, I think these are interesting times because I think the one thing people can say is that the coronavirus is probably going to be around for the next 12 months. So one area I would look for are work from home type investments, Jeff. There's actually a fund right now that's called Work From Home or WFH. It's publicly traded, Jeff. And right now, 42 percent of the labor force is actually working at home. Telemedicine, Jeff, has exploded. Look, three out of four people say that they are comfortable with telehealth or telemedicine right now. There is a fund called EDOC, E-D-O-C, that allows you to invest in digital health. And for sure, Jeff, people are not spending money on travel, leisure, uh, hospitality. So right now, home improvement, the big box stores, people are spending money at home. They're putting a deck on their house or a new bathroom. Those are all great areas, in my opinion, to look at over the next 12 months. I was taking a look uh, online that gold is at an all-time high. Is that a good time to sell your gold? Well, Jeff, look, uh, gold actually crossed $2,000 an ounce this year. It's up 30% or so year to date. And yes, uh, if you have gold at home, just remember, you're not going to be able to get the exact price of what gold retails for if you go to a place like goldprice.org at $2,000 an ounce. But if you're going to sell it, you'll roughly get, I would say, 60 to 80% of your gold price. But if you're going to sell gold, it's at an all-time high right now. This would be, in my opinion, a decent time to sell it. Ted Jenkin, thank you. Always love having you with us. We appreciate your time and your expertise. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only.
We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Hurricane Laura continuing to get stronger, intensifying as it gets closer to the Gulf Coast states. Right now, maximum sustained winds at 150 miles an hour. That is a strong Category 4 storm just below what will be classified as a Category 5. Here is the system right now. As you can see, that well-defined eye right now and that eye wall with a very uh, heavy rain and strong winds surrounding that. The rain shield is bringing up that rain into the Louisiana coastline. The winds are beginning there as well. And I want you to also see here, there's the center of the storm and it is getting closer to the coastline. There's that rain shield, but then also on that northeast quadrant of to the direction that it's moving toward that northeast quadrant is where we have the strongest winds and more of that rain and some of these rain bands as they hit land cause some rotation. You'll notice here the trop the uh, tornado watts that's in effect and then we have multiple tornado warnings in this band right here stretching from west of New Orleans on up into the northern parts of Louisiana. There is the eye of the storm. You can see that eye wall surrounding it with all of that convection and association with it right now less than 100 miles miles away from the coast there right at the Texas and Louisiana border and we think that landfall will be later on tonight. In fact, meteorologist Samantha Moore has been analyzing that latest advisory coming in and has more on that track and when it'll make landfall. Yeah, and it's that rapid intensification, Chris, that we've been talking about. I mean, yesterday it was a one, overnight it became a two, this morning it was a three, and then this afternoon a four, and as you were saying, could potentially be even stronger before it hits the coast if it doesn't go through that uh, eye wall regeneration. But we're looking at that uh, Cat 4 likely making... Uh, making landfall early in the morning at around 2 in the morning or so. But between now and then, conditions are deteriorating rapidly as it approaches the coastline and then working its way on up towards Arkansas. Still with tropical storm force winds tomorrow and also wreaking havoc with severe weather as it moves across Arkansas and then into the Ohio Valley. It should start to weaken by then into a depression, but still a lot of moisture associated with it. And a lot of that moisture will get pulled over us Friday night into Saturday, and that could fuel some more showers and storms around here as we head into the first half of the weekend. So the main points for Hurricane Laura are the catastrophic storm surge, which is uh, Ken Graham of the National Hurricane Center, the director there, saying that along the coast it is going to be unsurvivable. And even as far as 30 miles inland, that storm surge could be as much as like nine feet in orange. Orange is over 25 miles from the coast and they're forecasting nine feet of storm surge in Orange, Texas. Extreme hurricane force winds buffeting the coastline for several hours in the night, in the nighttime, in the darkness. That, how terrifying is that to have to live through that overnight tonight? And then, of course, that landfall will be occurring in the next few hours, likely into the early morning hours. So there are the winds that we expect to see, those hurricane force winds, as we head into uh, the early morning hours at darkness, that eye wall crossing over sometime around 2 o'clock their time, and then moving right along that Texas-Alabama, uh, excuse me, Texas-Louisiana line on up towards Arkansas. And the winds will be weakening as it gets to that point come Friday, and it'll become a depression. It should start to lose some of its tropical characteristics as well. But we could be buffeted by gusty winds along with that heavy rain as we head into our Friday night and Saturday. So rainfall amounts are, of course, going to be heaviest right along that track here where they could end up seeing well over a foot of rain. And, you know, fresh water flooding kills the most people when a hurricane comes on shore, and that's the storm surge combined with the rainfall. So with a storm surge 15 to 20 feet, and then you add in possibly over 12 inches of rain on top of that, 
This is really going to be a terrible flood event for those folks. Here we will be expecting to see an increase in our rainfall as well, and we'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit. All right, tonight we have an important follow-up to a story we first told you about a few weeks ago. Video art director from Flowery Branch, a journey to India on a movie assignment, and then COVID-19 hits, and she is stuck. Yeah, foreigners were stopped in their tracks with very few, if any, options of getting out. So we asked our Bill Liz, who covers the airlines and work for a major international carrier, to step in. Movie art director Sarah Pick has been trapped by the COVID-19 pandemic in Kolkata, India, for almost six months. 8,500 miles from her home in Flowery Branch. She says she's tried everything, but can't get home. Canceled flights and closed Indian borders made travel impossible. It was just chaotic and it was, it had gotten to the point where it was a bit hopeless. I just felt like I was starting to think I was going to be in India forever. <laughs> I got to the point where I've lost hope. For Sarah, there's a special reason to eagerly want to get home. Her mom, Lisa Robbins, is a cancer patient and her brother, Josh, has Down syndrome and autism. Their caregiver recently left and Fick knows it was urgent to get home. After learning of Sarah's dilemma late last week, we stepped in. We contacted United's executives in Chicago and we explained Sarah's situation and that she could not get out of the country. In less than 24 hours, India's top United Airlines executive reached out to Sarah by cell phone and by email and immediately the wheels started turning. I received uh, an email from him and then we talked, we spoke on the phone that he had booked a flight for me to return to the U.S. Next week, I'll leave here on September 3rd and I'll arrive in the U.S. on September 4th. So I'm a bit blown away. It seems a bit surreal, like I'm going to wake up from a dream. This is the first time feeling some hope that I will be able to get home to my mom and my brother in months. Sarah simply can't imagine that it all happened within days after waiting nearly six months. It's been so overwhelming because I just didn't expect it because it's happened so quickly because everything, I've been waiting since March and then all of a sudden over a two, three day period of time, it's, I just was shocked. Sarah's mom and brother plan to be at Hartsfield Jackson when she arrives next Friday for what is going to be a joyous reunion. And since the pandemic virtually closed India in March, United Airlines has worked with the Indian government and the U.S. State Department to try and provide flights from India to the United States. Sarah is now on one of those flights. The NBA has postponed all scheduled playoff games today, and the WNBA has also postponed three games scheduled for tonight. It began when players from the Milwaukee Bucks decided not to play in the wake of the police shooting of Jacob Blake. He was shot at least seven times in the back. It's another example of how NBA players want to be heard and be part of change. Yeah. When there were no sports, they took time to speak out. Like this. Now that sports have returned, games are being played, but athletes and coaches are just as dedicated to shining a light on social injustice in unprecedented ways. Some people get tired of hearing me say it, but we are scared as black people. Even in the Orlando Disney bubble, the NBA has been an outspoken voice for social justice with obvious messages and symbols. Did you find at the end of this game that helped you guys pull away? Uh, I don't know. That's all good and well. Um, I just want to send my prayers out to Jacob Blake and their family. Interviews dedicated to speaking out, win or lose. In sports, it's cool, it's good and well. It's how we take care of our families, but those are the real issues that we, we got to start addressing. Now they're uncertain if it's having an impact. And in the midst of the NBA playoffs, a must-win pinnacle of an athlete's season, a potential stronger strategy, boycotting. Priorities of what matters uh, may 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 be different than, than basketball. Today, the Milwaukee Bucks didn't show up for their playoff game against the Orlando Magic. As the horn sounded, they were still in the locker room. Eventually, they left, boycotting game five entirely. You had Orlando come out and start warming up. And as Jim and I were going over notes and getting ready, we looked at Milwaukee did not take the court. The defending champion Toronto Raptors seriously considering not playing in the Eastern Conference semifinals, potentially leaving the bubble, a move that would capture the attention of everyone. Coming down here making a choice to play, um, 
you know, we're supposed to not be in vain. Sports may be back, but the athletes are not letting that silence them. A Little League football game in Metro Atlanta, an 11-year-old player inspired by the protests of the Black Lives Matter movement decided to make his own statement. Here's 11 Alive's Naeem Abdullahi. A quick decision to make good trouble. You didn't tell your mom or dad that you were going to do it at that very moment. Was it just something that crossed your mind when you were on that field? Yes, ma'am. It just came across my mind. I've been thinking about it for a good while now, actually since the protest. Elijah says he loves football, but is already dreaming beyond the field. At just 11 years old, he's already experienced racism in his life, but once he attended the Atlanta protests a few months ago, he felt inspired to make a difference. It was amazing. Just the experience and seeing all these people that want to stand up for our lives. What was going through your mind at that very moment when you decided to take a knee? A lot of things were flooding through my head. But the main thing was, again, I'm a minority, so will my team support me? His mom and dad tell me that Elijah's courageous decision at the Brooks Bears game is in response to the state of the nation as this young generation tries to figure out how they'll make an impact, continuing on the efforts of the movement. I just wanted to, to reassure him that he did nothing wrong, that it is important to voice his opinion. And we're so, so proud of him. As you kind of look towards your future of what you want to be when you grow up, is continuing to be a voice for the community part of that? I, I think it is, and this will be a big stepping stone. I'm not saying I can, but if a lot of other people do it, we can change the world. For you, get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. 
We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Hurricane Laura getting closer to the Gulf Coast right now as the storm will continue to bring in some wind and heavy rain. The beginning of the deteriorating process is just beginning. It is only going to get worse there as we go through the rest of the nighttime hours. Here's a look at the storm. We're way up here, uh, not really having any major impacts from the storm right now. We did have a few scattered showers here just because of a lot of tropical moisture in our area, but not direct outer bands or anything from this storm. We'll get in a little bit closer. You can see the center of the storm right here. here Here's the Texas coast. There's the state line between Texas and Louisiana, and it's moving right up into that direction. Notice also a tornado watch that is in effect here uh, in the parts of Louisiana as well. And even we have multiple tornado warnings that you see right up here as well as the system there. That quadrant to the north of that is where we have those stronger storms. And there's those bands. And you see here one, two, three, four tornado warnings in effect in those bands as they're moving through uh, Louisiana. So it does does impact more than just those areas that are going to be experiencing the eye. Here is the eye right now, still over water, a uh, big time convection still surrounding the center of the storm. Right now, it is still about 90 miles, less than 100 miles away from the coastline. If it continues in that direction, moving at about 15 miles an hour, that would be less than six hours for landfall. We're thinking it would be, you know, uh, midnight to two o'clock in the morning when it's going to make the official landfall. However, this entire rain shield is really going to be impacting the coast for the rest of the evening hours. Of course, we have those hurricane warnings uh, in effect for the Louisiana and Texas coast. And then over here, closer to uh, the, the eastern parts of the, the uh, Louisiana coastline, those are tropical storm warnings. And then we have the storm surge watches and warnings as well. Storm surge is going to be around not just where the eye comes in, but that's where the, st uh, the strongest parts of the storm surge will come in. We're talking it's off the charts here. It goes up to great greater than nine feet above ground. We think we're going to see some storm surges nine to 13, maybe even some spots 15 to 20 foot storm surges. And then that extends on over into around New Orleans and even parts of the Mississippi coast as well with those storm surges that could be around a foot or so uh, above ground. So a major impact from this system as it moves in along with those winds. Now, Sam, a lot of folks have been talking about whether or not this system is going to become a category five. It has been intensifying, but there's a lot you have to watch. Number one, that eye wall replacement cycle, as well as you're monitoring the shear that we see in that area, too. That's right. I and mean, if you remember on Monday, Marco, it ran into a lot of shear and was just sheared apart, really. That shear is not present right now. The shear has weakened considerably. Where you see the blue on the map, that is very light wind shear. And that allows a storm, if all the other conditions are right, to intensify. There's nothing to rip it apart and disorganize it. So as it makes landfall, most likely in the early morning hours, as you were saying, it's going to have those winds up around 150 miles per hour or even greater possibly. So this is what we are thinking as it moves on shore. It'll probably be around 2 in the morning their time roughly, but they will have been barraged by hours of hurricane force winds by the time the eye crosses over. And then it continues to move to the north with tropical storm force winds even through the day tomorrow into Arkansas. And that will also cause some severe weather possibly across much of the Ozarks. And then into the Ohio Valley it goes. And it should weaken by the time it gets there into a depression. So it won't be as organized, but still capable of producing some strong storms. And then dragging some tropical moisture through here Friday and into Saturday. And that means we could see some very heavy downpours once again. And our ground's pretty saturated, so it's not going to take much for us to get some flooding around here. So as far as the forecast track. The heaviest of the rain associated with the center of the circulation, obviously, as it moves in. And the, we, they could easily see a foot of rain along the track itself, if not as much as a foot plus in some of the harder hit areas, bringing in heavy rain to Arkansas and then over in towards the Ohio Valley. There's that moisture that gets moved in here on Friday. Tomorrow we won't have an impact from it yet. We do have a good moist air mass. We could have a 20% chance of showers and storms. But it's going to be Friday night into Saturday that will likely see some stronger showers and storms form. We could have some frequent lightning and we could have that flooding concern if we get some training storms over us. And it looks like 
like Saturday during the day, we can indeed see that scenario play out. So we'll be watching for that. Nothing at this point indicating that we'll have organized severe storms, but we could have some very heavy rain out of these. So right now, our radar is looking much better than it did earlier. We've had a few showers around Troop County pop up. We have some in Gilmer, Fanning County uh, right now, but they're very light and few and far between. There are those thunderstorms that rolled through Troop, Troop County. They're already starting to fade away. So I think the trend the next 12 hours is going to be quieter. We'll see. Uh, more tranquil conditions overnight. Temperatures getting down into the low 70s. And then tomorrow we'll end up seeing uh, an 8 on the wasometer on that scale of 1 to an 11, with an 11 being a perfect day. We'll have an 8 with a 20% chance of showers and storms. So as we head through the day tomorrow, you can expect to see a few of those clouds building up. An isolated downpour or two. We don't expect them to hang around long. It shouldn't be as much as we saw across Gwinnett and northeast Georgia tonight. We expect fewer and we expect less coverage. And uh, those that do form should be shorter lived. We may be heavy downpours, but they should be shorter lived. So we're going to be overall drier on Thursday. It'll probably be one of the driest days of the next week. We'll be much warmer, though, temperatures in the low 90s. So it's going to feel pretty warm out there with the humidity. And then we'll have a wetter start to our weekend. Friday night into our Saturday is when we expect to see the most active weather with some very heavy downpours possible. So a 20% chance on Thursday, a 40% chance Friday, a 60% chance on Saturday. Saturday is not going to be the best weekend day, that's for sure. Sunday is looking a little better with more typical heat of the day stuff, a 30% chance of that. And that pattern continues into the beginning of next week. We hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you. We hear you. 
This week we are taking a look at race in America. For most households, the talk is that often awkward conversation between parents and kids about the birds and the bees, but in black families, there's another talk and it's about life and death. Here's one mother's dream for her son. So tell us about Lance. What do you see when you look at your son? Oh man, a ball of energy. A ball of energy? Uh, intelligence, a light in a dark room, loves football, loves uh, basketball, loves soccer, and loves tennis. Yes, and just an amazing personality. The fear is that they won't come home. The fear is that they will, they're going to get that call. The fear is that their child is going to be another hashtag. What is I do not want him to grow up with anger in his heart to hate uh, and disrespect authority when it comes to uh, police uh, or anyone for that matter. Speak to Lance if this were Lance in the camera and you were having the talk with him, what would you say to Lance? Shouldn't have to have this conversation with my son. I shouldn't have to tell my son that there are going to be white people that don't like you. Not because of your talent or not because of you. They're not gonna like you because of your skin. I shouldn't have to have that conversation with my son. My son should be able to live a free and happy life as a child. My son has a heart full of love, and I feel like having that conversation with him will put hate into his heart with people, and I don't want that for him. I don't. I shouldn't have to have this, you know, deep conversation, but it's a must. Moving out back, down by the river. It's frustrating that nobody understands but us. In our special Equality Matters, we examine social injustice and systemic racial inequalities in our community. It airs in just a few minutes, 9 p.m. on our sister station, 11 Alive. Well, still ahead right here in prime time, a powerful Category 4 hurricane taking aim at the Gulf Coast just hours away from the Texas Louisiana coast. Chris will be updating the track of Hurricane Laura next. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. 
the things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. An Atlanta nurse contracted COVID-19 while treating patients on assignment in New York. And when she returned to Georgia, she couldn't go back to work in hospitals. She tells Hope Ford the psychological toll of battling the virus and treating patients put her on a different path taking care of the patient and then I became the patient. Rochelle Dumas spent two months working in New York when COVID hit the city. I was working on a COVID ICU with the worst of the worst COVID patients. With limited protective supplies, she wore the same mask for days. In June, she contracted COVID. I ended up getting in my rental car and driving to the hospital where I worked at uh, to go get checked out because it was at that point beyond my control. In a month, her symptoms subsided and she headed back to Georgia, but she couldn't return to work in a hospital. Hospital. Rochelle was emotionally drained. When I got back to the hotel, I couldn't sleep because I heard the ventilators. I heard the families crying while I was holding the iPad so they can watch their family member die because they couldn't come up there. But Rochelle is a nurse and still wanted to take care of people. So she started her own company, Onward Health Solutions and Education. Rochelle helps employers with COVID signage, provides deep cleaning and personal hygiene education. It feels good to put the truth out in the atmosphere to help others to make sure I'm putting a dent in um, in that curve that we're trying to flatten. Turns out it's the exact thing she needed to fully heal herself. Rachel has already helped nearly two dozen businesses across Metro Atlanta. We was gonna stay, but when they said category four, that was it. Right now on prime time, time is running out for people to get to safety as a powerful hurricane, Laura, bears down on the Texas Louisiana coastline. Plus, 11 Alive viewers reaching out for answers about delays in unemployment benefits, so we took your questions directly to the Commissioner of Georgia's Department of Labor. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Catastrophic damage, unsurvivable storm surge. That's what the National Hurricane Center is warning about Laura that is bringing to the Texas Louisiana border. The storm now, a dangerous category four hurricane. This is a live look from the shores of Galveston, Texas. Let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb in the Storm Tracker Center. So, Chris, will Laura have any immediate impacts on Metro Atlanta? You know, we'll have some indirect impacts from the storm after it moves inland, but right now we're watching this system as well as almost 700 people right now on Facebook Live. That's why you see my phone right now. We're talking about the impacts of the storm as well. Let me break down what's happening. Here we are in Atlanta. Here's the storm down here in the Gulf of Mexico, and it is a big storm. Maximum sustained winds now at 150 miles an hour. That is a strong Category 4 storm. If it got up to 157 miles an hour or greater, that would then be a Category 5 storm. And so we'll keep watching this as it's going to be making landfall. We have another 40 
to five hours to go before the center of the storm moves inland right there along the Texas and Louisiana line there along the coast. But you can see the rain shield is already moving in and they're already seeing some strong winds. Also, look at these outer bands. All right, so there's the eye of the storm. But right up here, these are one of the outer bands and we have multiple tornado warnings in association with that. So it's more than just where the eye is going to go in. There are a lot of places here. Uh, this is just to the north and west of New Orleans where we see these multiple tornado warnings as well as that tornado watch. Here's the eye. Just look at that very clear center of the storm there and the eye wall with that the greater convection as well as the heavy rain and the winds there. Uh, we just got a position update in from the National Hurricane Center and that corresponds with what I'm showing you here. Less than 100 miles away, about 90 miles away uh, from the border. All right, let's take a look at this on the full screen and you can see what we're watching with the track of the storm. As you see there, it is a category four storm. You see the hurricane warnings and tropical storm warnings there along the coastline. Let's put this into motion. You can see the system most likely is going to still be a category four storm when it moves inland. We're thinking around midnight to two in the morning as it moves in as a category four, and then it will lose some strength and become a tropical storm by tomorrow afternoon. Still strong as a tropical storm there over uh, over parts of uh, Louisiana moving into Arkansas and then a depression as it takes that turn and moves through Kentucky. So here we are on Saturday. The center of the storm is going to be just to the north of us. So with that being the location close to us, us, we're going to be seeing our rain chances increasing on Saturday as well as the wind kicking up a little bit on Saturday. We're not talking about tropical storm force winds or anything like that, but some breezes maybe 10 to 20 miles an hour on Saturday. Stay with us. I'm going to continue our conversation. If you want to join me on my Facebook page, Chris Holcomb 11 Alive on Facebook, we'll keep talking about what to expect with this system and more about those potential impacts. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a couple of minutes, sir. You know, have you ever wondered what it would look like to fly directly into the heart of a growing hurricane? Well, a group of hurricane hunters did just that yesterday, capturing the terrifying majesty of those swirling storm clouds. But they're not doing it just to get in there and check it out. Uh, they're also collecting data to help create more accurate forecast models for folks like meteorologist Chris Holcomb. Just use the 11 Alive app to uh, help you stay ahead of the weather, and there you're going to find the interactive maps and radar to help you track that rain and storms wherever you are within your community. You know, our COVID numbers are holding steady, which is better than watching them rise, right? The public health officials warned we really need to see these numbers drop further to keep our children in school and nursing homes residents safe. Today, about 2,200 new cases were reported, but testing was also down. If that trend continues, it will get a lot harder to spot those outbreaks. And even though we've all heard these numbers for months now, Reveal investigator Rebecca Lindstrom says there's one chart that's still causing a lot of confusion. In your efforts to keep up with COVID over the past five months, you have probably looked at more color-coded pie charts and bar graphs than you have ever wanted. And there is no doubt that some of what those charts are trying to show us can be a bit confusing. This is the chart the Department of Public Health puts out each day to represent the number of new cases reported to them in the last 24 hours. It looks pretty similar to what we show you with our own graphics after we've had some time to poke around and vet the numbers a bit. But this is also a chart DPH puts out each day on new cases. It is the same timeline, but looks wildly different. Why? It's kind of like opening a time capsule, because once a positive case is reported, a contact tracer helps walk that person back in time to figure out when and how they got the virus. Was it that birthday party, trip to the grocery store, or perhaps a neighborhood social? It is that date that gets put into the second graph. Just look at July 6th. As far as new cases go, we might have been sighing a sense of relief. There were only about 1,500 new cases that day. But as time went on and contact tracers did their job, we began to realize that there was actually more COVID in our community on that day than at any other time. 5,800 people sick at one time. For Georgia, that's a record. So this drop you see doesn't mean the virus is gone. It just means we haven't tracked the virus back yet. What is a better real time indicator is active hospital patients. These are people we know who are really sick right now. And it shows us that regardless of what graph you view, the virus 
is still with us. Complaints of unemployment check delays continue to flood into the Lemon Alive newsroom. Emails and calls have been coming in for months now, and we are where Atlanta speaks. Lemon Alive's Tracy Amick Peer went straight to the commissioner of the Georgia Department of Labor to get you your answers. Without this income, I'm literally struggling counting pennies and nickels and dimes. Roland Morrison is far from alone, with record numbers of Georgians unemployed. Labor Commissioner Mark Butler says a record number of Georgians are also receiving unemployment. Roughly there's about 1.5 million people that are currently on unemployment. But many claim they've been waiting weeks and even months for a check. Butler says there are a few reasons why this is happening. One is eligibility. Uh, unemployment, by law and by rule, is meant to, to go to people who lose their job through no fault of their own. That's the key word, through no fault of their own. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of people file unemployment right now, uh, especially during this pandemic, uh, that don't fall under that category. Another reason some people aren't getting a check is because they filed for and received unemployment last year and need to file a new claim. Individuals that have an old claim and then the claim expires, they have to reapply again once that claim expires. And a lot of folks are not catching that. And another huge problem right now, delaying the process is fraud. Uh, some of it is organized crime. Some of it is domestic and some of it is international. Butler admits the call volume is high, but says overall, most are getting what they need. Of all the people that currently have a valid claim and have asked for payment, 92% uh, of those individuals are actually getting payment. There are new tools online right now to help people answer questions like new links on the CARES Act and the lost wages assistance. Butler also says that there are new fraud prevention tools like ID.me. He says if you get an email from ID.me, you want to pay attention because that means your account has been flagged. 11 Alive is here to help you get the answers you're looking for. So Texas your unemployment questions right there to the number on your screen, 404-885-7600. You're also going to find more resources on our website at 11alive.com. All right, new tonight, folks. Athletes all across three sports now are taking a stand to protest the Jacob Blake shooting, which took place in Wisconsin. He was shot seven times in the back. So now the Atlanta United and the Atlanta Dream Games were postponed tonight, just like a lot of other NBA games out there. This comes after tensions in downtown Atlanta last night as protesters took to the streets for Blake. Now, uh, Atlanta police arrested eight people and and a police officer shot Blake in the back at least seven times, as we just pointed out, in Wisconsin. It all took place on Sunday. Jacob Blake is now paralyzed from the waist down. Atlanta Police Chief Celeste Murphy uh, says when officers arrived near Woodruff Park around 8 p.m. last night, the protesters targeted them with fireworks and frozen water bottles as well. Uh, a lot was going on. We brought that to you live last night. And also with fireworks, as well. One officer was maced. Murphy says the crowd seemed to be a younger group here and officers were not familiar with these organizers at all. She says that APD is ready to respond to any other protest that may spark violence. We do welcome peaceful protests and hope that we can reach out and work with anybody who does want to do that. This never was pe peaceful and it's obvious it wasn't intended to be peaceful. A teenager is now facing murder charges after protests for J uh, Jacob Blake in Wisconsin. It turned deadly last night. Police arrested the 17-year-old uh, young man today in Antioch, Illinois. Video shows that he had a rifle. Uh, two people were shot to death during that time. And another person was injured during the third night of violence in Wisconsin. Police have not said whether the teen will be charged as an adult. You know, two weeks ago, a video of a dog uh, actually getting thrown up against a, a wall by the owner surfaced on social media. A lot of folks were talking about this. Uh, the Duluth Police Department saw that video, then took the, took the dog and arrested the owner. Understandably, residents out there are very upset, outraged by that incident, and many of you are as well, and flooded the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office with concerns about the abused dog. So the sheriff took notice. And we want to warn you right now, folks, uh, that some of the video you're about to see, it may be considered disturbing. 11 Allies' Brittany Kleinpeter has that story. A case of dog abuse has neighbors fired up 
and some wondering whatever happened to this pet. Earlier this month, this video surfaced on social media showing the dog being thrown against a wall outside a Gwinnett County apartment. Authorities tell us the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel has an eye injury but is okay. The owner arrested, neighbors outraged. Many citizens were contacting Sheriff Conway out of concern for the welfare of the dog. And through that, he made the offer to the county animal shelter to foster her here in the Gwinnett Jail Dogs Unit. The 18-month-old dog named Victoria is not available for adoption due to the pending court case. In the meantime, she has a spot in the agency's Operation Second Chance program. The initiative allows inmates at the Gwinnett County Jail to train homeless animals. So rather than being in animal control, just waiting for this legal case to work its way through the criminal justice system, she could be here where she's getting a lot of hands-on attention, lots and lots of love and affection, as well as really great obedience training. Victoria's future is still not clear. There is a pending criminal case. Once that's resolved, a judge will decide where the pup goes next. And authorities tell me that Victoria's owner is facing animal cruelty charges. Don't forget, we are streaming right now on the Love It Alive YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. We got more Love It Alive news. Prime time after the break. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every Welcome back, everyone. After beginning the school year online, several grades in Georgia's largest school district returned to the classroom today. 11 Alive's Joe Hanke learned Gwinnett County parents are split on sending their kids back into the classroom. Gwinnett County Public Schools eased back into in-person classes this morning with students in kindergarten, first, sixth, and ninth grades having the option of returning to their physical classrooms. I just don't think personally the education at home was, you know, as, as good as what he would get in school. Nicole Diagostino's son, Landon, headed to his first in-person freshman classes today. His third grade sister, Lauren, will be in her classroom next week. So there, there's always some apprehension because you want to keep your children safe and you want to do what's best for them. Diagostino says the district's plans for following CDC guidelines put her at ease. Gwinnett published details of safety measures, including new cleaning plans, a mask requirement, one-way hallways, and steps to social distance students. Gwinnett County Public Schools reports 44% of students able to return to a classroom today did. 56% continued digital learning. For K-12, through the same percents are expected to remain online or head back as more grade levels have the option in the coming days. After being at home since March, Diagostino says her children want to be in class. The social component, I believe, is, is huge for the kids, especially teenagers. Uh, just being at home just was starting to wear on them. 52 people signed up to speak at the most recent Gwinnett Board of Education meeting, some approving of plans to resume in-person teaching. Others, including this first grade teacher, were not. I'm scared for my health. I'm scared for my family's health. 
I'm scared for my co-workers' health. And I'm scared for my students' health. For K-12, 427 Gwinnett County teachers called out today compared to 547 teachers one year ago. In a statement, a district spokeswoman said our schools did a great job in preparing for the return of the first of our students to in-person instruction, ensuring that their buildings and staff were ready and that they had substitutes ready to provide coverage for the teachers who were out today. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers as we continue to track Laura, a very strong storm, a strong category four storm getting close to category five right now with maximum sustained winds at 150 miles an hour. My phone is still here because we still have right around 500 people on Facebook Live as we are tracking this storm moving in in Atlanta. No real direct impacts right now. We had a few showers just because of a lot of the tropical moisture that is in place over the southeast. Not really any outer bands moving up toward the Atlanta area. Here's the storm right now in the Gulf. You'll notice here the tornado watch in effect for much of Louisiana and even tornado warnings that are in effect to the north and to the west of New Orleans. There's the center of the storm. Big time convection around the eye and the eye wall. Here is the coast of Louisiana. There's the state line between Texas and Louisiana, where we think this is going to be headed toward in the next few hours, making landfall. But when I say landfall, I'm talking about the eye. Folks on the Louisiana coastline are already feeling the impacts of this system with heavy rain and some wind that's beginning to move through, as well as some of those outer bands extending out from that main rain shield. Some of these going up through Louisiana, and that's where we have a couple of tornado warnings right here near Kentwood, north of Hammond. There's New Orleans, so this is north and west of New Orleans, moving into the southern parts of Mississippi. Here's the center of the storm. We talked about that convection surrounding the eye wall. That's the strongest part. This is about now 82 miles away from the coast right there at the uh, near the Lake Charles area. So that's where we think this is going to be going. Let's take a look at this on the bigger picture. You can see the track of what we're watching right now with the storm category four maximum sustained winds at 150 miles an hour moving north northwest at 15. Here's landfall uh, later on tonight around midnight and after with 150 mile an hour winds. We think it'll be making landfall right there on the coastline and at the border of Texas and Louisiana. And then tomorrow in the afternoon, still a tropical storm in the northern parts of Louisiana and even into Arkansas late Thursday night into early Friday as a tropical storm, and then it becomes a depression. So this is what we have to watch here in Atlanta, the center of that low. This is Saturday morning at two, and then that quickly moves off to the north and to the east. So late Friday into Saturday as that low travels from here to here, it's going to start spreading more rain into our area as well as some breezes. I don't want to say windy conditions, but just some breezes moving in. The impacts on the Gulf Coast, uh, extensive wind, catastrophic wind damage there possible. And uh, earlier, the National Hurricane Center described the storm surge as unsurvivable storm surge if people didn't evacuate here on the coastline. We're talking storm surge. This goes off the charts. Anything red go is a nine feet or above. We're talking about storm surges there, maybe up to 15 feet, some spots maybe even 15 to 20 foot storm surge. So this is by tomorrow morning. You can see the storm inland, still really strong winds there moving through Arkansas and then going through tomorrow afternoon, or actually through Louisiana, getting closer to Arkansas tomorrow afternoon. Then the storm up in Arkansas moves toward uh, Tennessee and Kentucky. This is the part we need to watch as it's to our north on Saturday. We're going to see the rain moving in. Notice these wind barbs right here showing the breezy conditions that we'll be dealing with about 10 to 15 miles an hour. It moves out, but then nothing really cleans out our air. We will see the rain chances coming down a little bit Sunday to only about 30%. And then on Monday, the rain chances down a little bit too. Let's talk about those winds. Remember, we focus on not only just the eye, but also we watch those winds that are going to be strongest on the right hand side. A lot of the uh, Louisiana coastline will get inundated with rough surf strong winds. Those winds continue, but then watch this. This is into Friday uh, later in the afternoon. The blue colors here again, not tropical storm force winds or anything, but we're talking about some winds around 10 miles an hour, maybe a little bit higher than that. And then on Saturday, a little bit of yellow showing up. There's the center of the storm. All right, the center of circulation right there of what is left of that depression. We're talking about 10 to 20 mile an hour winds when you get those yellow colors that we're seeing there. So just notice on Saturday, uh, you're going to have some showers around. I think they'll taper off later in the day and then also some breezy conditions. Those heavier rain amounts pretty much follow the track of the center of the storm.
but we here in Atlanta through the weekend most likely about a half inch to an inch and a half of rain possible uh, from this system from the indirect effect. So tomorrow rain chances are lower. We're actually going to be kind of dry tomorrow. High of 92 degrees, so it's going to be hotter with a little more sunshine. 40% chance for showers Friday. Best chance for rain on Saturday, also a little bit breezy with highs near 87. Then rain chances down to 30% Sunday and Monday, back to 40% Tuesday, down to 30% again on Wednesday with high temperatures after tomorrow in the 90s. For the rest of the period, we'll see highs in the 80s. Some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1105 News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. One of the main issues in any election is always the economy, and we know there are questions about stocks and investing. The closer we get to November, the bell is ringing for all of us. Joining me right now is Ted Jenkins, the CEO of Oxygen Financial. And with the election coming, Ted, how should we think about investing our money? Which direction should we go in your estimation? Well, let's talk about both forks in the road, Jeff. You know, if Biden happens to be elected president, I think people can look forward to investing in things like green energy, uh, infrastructure will be really good right now. Electric cars will be good. Materials, all those things that you're seeing and you heard from the DNC convention. And if Trump does get reelected, I would expect more of the same, Jeff. Uh, technology, social media, of course, banks, defense will all be good. But I want, think one thing people should watch out for at home is that tax policy will not change until 2021 if Joe Biden gets into the president's office. But one of the things he's talking about is raising capital gains tax from 20% to almost 40%, Jeff. And that could cause a lot of wealthy people to sell their stocks before the end of the year. That is something to keep an eye on. So no matter who gets elected here, which investments do the best? I mean, what, what, what do well, no matter if it's a Republican or a Democrat? Well, I mean, Jeff, I think these are interesting times because I think the one thing people can say is that the coronavirus is probably gonna be around for the next 12 months. So one area I would look for are work from home type investments, Jeff. There's actually a fund right now that's called Work From Home or WFH. It's publicly traded, Jeff. And right now, 42% of the labor force is actually working at home. 
telemedicine, Jeff, has exploded. Look, three out of four people say that they are comfortable with telehealth or telemedicine right now. There is a fund called EDOC, E-D-O-C, that allows you to invest in digital health. And for sure, Jeff, people are not spending money on travel, leisure, uh, hospitality. So right now, home improvement, the big box stores, people are spending money at home. They're putting a deck on their house or a new bathroom. Those are all great areas, in my opinion, to look at over the next 12 months. I was taking a look uh, online that gold is at an all-time high. Is that a good time to sell your gold? Well, Jeff, look, uh, gold actually crossed $2,000 an ounce this year. It's up 30% or so year to date. And yes, uh, if you have gold at home, just remember, you're not going to be able to get the exact price of what gold retails for if you go to a place like goldprice.org at $2,000 an ounce. But if you're going to sell it, you'll roughly get, I would say, 60 to 80% of your gold price. But if you're going to sell gold, it's at an all-time high right now. This would be, in my opinion, a decent time to sell it. Ted Jenkins, thank you. Always love having you with us. We appreciate your time and your expertise. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's 9.30. We begin our newscast tonight or this half hour of prime time talking about Hurricane Laura. That is a major hurricane. Maximum sustained winds at 150 miles an hour. That is a strong category four storm just shy of category five strength. The storm now is uh, about 80 plus miles away from landfall. Now we're talking about the center of the storm making landfall. We're already seeing this rain shield with really heavy rain and the wind beginning to move in to these areas of the Louisiana coastline, as well as some of these outer bands that have some severe weather with it. So there you see the eye still over water. Here is the Louisiana coast. Here's the Texas and Louisiana 
state line right there, and that's where the storm is going to be headed. Now, in some of these outer bands, though, extending up through Louisiana and even into southern Mississippi, we have strong storms, and some of that in northern Mississippi, just not as strong. These have the potential to produce some tornadoes where you see a tornado watch in effect, and we even have had multiple tornado warnings. There's even one of those still left right around Kentwood, uh, which is just to the west of Interstate 55 that goes from Reserve to Hammond up to Kentwood. And then these have also had some tornado warnings along with them as well, with a land falling tropical system. Some of those bands often can have some rotation with them. Here's the center of the storm, and there's all the convection with it right now. That uh, northeast quadrant as it moves forward is the quadrant with the strongest storms with it. 82 miles away from the uh, coastline here, if it continues in that northwest direction. So a lot to watch with the storm as it moves in. Let's take a look at the official track. Uh, the National Hurricane Center will update this again a little bit later. We're getting intensity and position updates every hour now from the Hurricane Center. It's a category four. It's going to be moving inland tonight. We think that it would be crossing over the land, the center of it between midnight and two in the morning. Uh, but all of that wind and rain going to be really impacting a big part of the Louisiana coastline as well as part of the Texas coast too. tropical storm through uh, Louisiana and Arkansas. Then it becomes a tropical depression. It's going to be north of us on Saturday. And so with it being that area of low pressure that close to us, we're still going to see some showers and breezes late Friday and into Saturday. I'm going to break that down for you coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a couple of minutes, sir. Tonight, a really important follow-up to a story we first told you about a few weeks ago. A video art director from Flowery Branch journeyed to India on a movie assignment. Then COVID-19 hit India with a vengeance. Foreigners were stopped right there in their tracks with few, if any, options to get out of there. So we asked our Bill Liz, who covers the airlines and work for a major international carrier, to step in. Movie art director Sarah Pick has been trapped by the COVID-19 pandemic in Kolkata, India for almost six months. 8,500 miles from her home in Flowery Branch. She says she's tried everything, but can't get home. Canceled flights and closed Indian borders made travel impossible. It was just chaotic and it was, it had gotten to the point where it was a bit hopeless. I just felt like I was starting to think I was gonna be in India forever. <laughs> I got to the point where I've lost hope. For Sarah, there's a special reason to eagerly want to get home. Her mom, Lisa Robbins, is a cancer patient, and her brother, Josh, has Down syndrome and autism. Their caregiver recently left, and Fick knows it was urgent to get home. After learning of Sarah's dilemma late last week, we stepped in. We contacted United's executives in Chicago, and we explained Sarah's situation and that she could not get out of the country. In less than 24 hours, India's top United Airlines executive reached out to Sarah by cell phone and by email, and immediately the wheels started turning. I received a, an email from him, and then we talked, we spoke on the phone that he had booked a flight for me to return to the U.S. next week. I'll leave here on September 3rd, and I'll arrive in the U.S on September 4th. So I'm a bit blown away. It seems a bit surreal, like I'm gonna wake up from a dream. This is the first time feeling some hope that I will be able to get home to my mom and my brother in months. Sarah simply can't imagine that it all happened within days after waiting nearly six months. It's been so overwhelming because I just didn't expect it because it's happened so quickly because everything, I've been waiting since March. And then all of a sudden over a two, three day period of time, it's, I just was shocked. Sarah's mom and brother plan to be at Hartsfield Jackson when she arrives next Friday for what is going to be a joyous reunion. All right, so since the pandemic virtually shut down India back in March, United Airlines has worked with the Indian government and the U.S. State Department to provide reparation flights from India back to the U.S. of A. By the way, good news here, Sarah is now on one of those flights. Well, the NBA has postponed all scheduled playoff games today. It began when players from the Milwaukee Bucks decided not to play in the wake of a police officer shooting, the shooting of Jacob Blake in the back seven times. 
Three WNBA games set for tonight have also been postponed, and it's another example of how NBA players want to be heard and be part of change. When there were no sports, they took time to speak out. Now that sports have returned, games are being played, but athletes and coaches are just as dedicated to shining a light on social injustice in unprecedented ways. Some people get tired of hearing me say it, but we are scared as black people. Even in the Orlando Disney bubble, the NBA has been an outspoken voice for social justice with obvious messages and symbols. Did you find at the end of this game that helped you guys pull away? Uh, I don't know. That's all good and well. Um, I just want to send my prayers out to Jacob Blake and their family. Interviews dedicated to speaking out, win or lose. In sports, it's cool, it's good and well. It's how we take care of our families, but those are the real issues that we, we got to start addressing. Now they're uncertain if it's having an impact. And in the midst of the NBA playoffs, a must-win pinnacle of an athlete's season, a potential stronger strategy, boycotting. Priorities of what matters uh, may 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 be different than, than basketball. Today, the Milwaukee Bucks didn't show up for their playoff game against the Orlando Magic. As the horn sounded, they were still in the locker room. Eventually, they left, boycotting game five entirely. You had Orlando come out and start warming up. And as Jim and I were going over notes and getting ready, we looked at Milwaukee did not take the court. The defending champion Toronto Raptors seriously considering not playing in the Eastern Conference semifinals, potentially leaving the bubble, a move that would capture the attention of everyone. Coming down here making a choice to play, um, you know, we're supposed to not be in vain. Sports may be back, but the athletes are not letting that silence them. A little league football game in Metro Atlanta. An 11 year old player felt inspired by the nationwide protest and the Black Lives Matter movement and decided to make a bold statement on the football field. 11 Alive's Naeem Abdullahi brings us his story. A quick decision to make good trouble. You didn't tell your mom or dad that you were going to do it at that very moment. Was it just something that crossed your mind when you were on that field? Yes, ma'am. It just came across my mind. I've been thinking about it for a good while now, actually since the protest. Elijah says he loves football, but is already dreaming beyond the field. At just 11 years old, he's already experienced racism in his life, but once he attended the Atlanta protests a few months ago, he felt inspired to make a difference. <laughs> It was amazing. Just the experience and seeing all these people that want to stand up for our lives. What was going through your mind at that very moment when you decided to take a knee? A lot of things were flooding through my head. But the main thing was, again, I'm a minority, so will my team support me? His mom and dad tell me that Elijah's courageous decision at the Brooks Bears game is in response to the state of the nation as this young generation tries to figure out how they'll make an impact, continuing on the efforts of the movement. I just wanted to, to reassure him that he did nothing wrong, that it is important to voice his opinion. And we're so, so proud of him. As you kind of look towards your future of what you want to be when you grow up, is continuing to be a voice for the community part of that? I, I think it is, and this will be a big stepping stone. I'm not saying I can, but if a lot of other people do it, we can change the world. We there are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. 
because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. Laura getting closer to the Gulf Coast, and it is a very strong storm, a strong Category 4, almost a Category 5 storm. And you can see it here just moving right across the Gulf of Mexico, uh, moving to the north-northwest at about 15 miles an hour, and it will have a collision course in with the Louisiana coast and right here close to the Texas coast as it moves inland later on. You can see here that we focus more than on just the center of the storm. You can see some of these stronger storms moving in with the rain shield those bands with heavy rain and tornado warnings with that. We have a new tornado warning right here, right along the uh, coastline with that band that's moving in with some rotation and it's possible to see uh, tornadoes there as well. You can see that's part of that new warning that we have right now. Here's the center of the storm, all of that convection, the strongest stuff as this moves up toward the north northwest. It is that right front quadrant that is the strongest and that's where we're seeing those uh, heavier showers and storms moving in. Again, we do have in that little band right up there one tornado warning. We had multiple ones earlier in these bands. So that's why we always tell you don't focus just on where the center of the storm is going to be going because a lot of people along the coast are going to be impacted on this. There is that center. We watch this though right now because it will keep moving up toward the north and to the north northwest and it's about 82 miles away from landfall or from moving in there to or near the Texas and Louisiana state line. Let's take a look at the official track of what we're watching out there. Again, we'll get another, we get updates every hour from the Hurricane Center on the position estimate as well as the wind speed, uh, but we'll get an official track in tonight before 11 o'clock. But I really don't think we're gonna see much, in, much changes though. A category four storm, it is possible that it could increase to a category five. But so far, the Hurricane Center is thinking this will be a strong cat four with winds of 150 miles an hour at landfall. We think it's going to be doing that uh, between midnight and two in the morning and then continuing to move northward as a tropical storm in north of Louisiana tomorrow afternoon, even still a tropical storm in uh, Arkansas uh, late Thursday night into Friday and then coming down to a depression Friday afternoon and then a depression north of Atlanta well north of Atlanta in Kentucky overnight Friday night into early Saturday and then quickly moving off to the north and to the east. So at this position here, uh, Friday into Saturday, 
we're going to see some rain moving into our area and even the potential for some winds. Now, I want to show you the Saffir Simpson scale because a lot of folks have been asking, you know, what about what is the cutoff between a four and to a five? So let me break down uh, some of the uh, impacts with a category one storm, 74 miles uh, mile an hour winds to 95 mile an hour winds with damage. Of course, that can happen with a category one storm. At a category two storm, it becomes extensive damage when you have 96 to 110 mile an hour winds. A category three is when you have 111 mile an hour winds up to 129 mile an hour winds, which is devastating damage there. And yeah, it goes even higher. So a category four right now is 130 to 156 mile an hour winds. And right now it's at 150. So it's at the higher end of a cat four. And that's when you start seeing catastrophic damage with wind storm surge as well. And then if it got up to 157 or above, that then would be a category five storm with bigger storm surge here, catastrophic damage, destroying uh, uh, buildings. And uh, that is something that you do not want to see. And remember Hurricane Michael down along the coast there at Mexico Beach and the Florida Panhandle and near Panama City. That was a category five storm. So with the destructive damage they had there, similar to that moving in tonight here to the Louisiana and Texas coast. Here we go tonight. This is at three in the morning. We do think it'll be inland by then the center of the storm, but all that rain and wind, it is going to be a really rough night for a big part of the Louisiana coastline. And then here we go Thursday afternoon, the center of the storm moving up into Arkansas continues moving north and then it starts to take that easterly turn Friday into Saturday. So it's late Friday into Saturday. This is Saturday at noon. As it moves to the north into Kentucky, that's when we'll see some of that moisture coming our way with showers, maybe some thunder and lightning. I'm not overly concerned about a big time severe weather threat with this uh, based on where we are in relation to that low. But we also may see some breezes with this as well. By Sunday, it pulls away, but we're still going to have tropical moisture left behind, giving us scattered showers on Sunday. I do think the rain chances will be a little bit lower on Sunday and into Monday at about 30% chance for rain. Here's a look at the wind field. Now here's the center of the storm. We have those very strong hurricane force winds surrounding that moving inland tonight, but those winds extending far to the east. We had folks on um, my Facebook Live earlier asking about the Alabama coastline and Florida Panhandle. The yellow there is showing winds between 20 and 30 miles an hour. So that far away from the center, we're still going to have some of those strong winds moving in. And then for us, this is what I want you to watch for Friday. There's the center of the storm uh, moving into uh, parts of Kentucky and Tennessee. We will see the blue color right here, some spotty areas of 10 mile an hour wind. So we're just talking about breezy conditions starting to kick up on Friday and into Saturday as well. On Saturday at noon, even some yellows showing up here around Atlanta on the south side over on the east side, and that's winds of 20 miles an hour. So we can see 10 to 20 mile an hour breezes here on Saturday, and then everything starts calming down once we get into Sunday as well. The strongest rain or the heaviest rain is going to be pretty much along that track of the low that I just showed you there. Big time rain amounts through Louisiana, Arkansas, and then it tapers off. Still big rain though up into Kentucky, but not as much as they're having there uh, when that storm is stronger. Here in Atlanta, we're talking about a half inch to an inch and a half of rain from the system or the indirect impacts of it. Uh, tomorrow's going to be dry, mainly 20% chance for a shower, and then back up to a 40% chance for showers Friday, especially later Friday and early on Saturday. Saturday, that 60% chance for rain. And then as we head into Sunday and Monday, rain chances down to 30%, back to 40% Tuesday, down to 30% again on Wednesday. And after we have highs tomorrow in the 90s, then we'll see highs each day that'll pretty much be in the upper 80s. This week, we're taking a look at race in America, and for most households out there, the talk, so to speak, is that often awkward conversation between parents and kids about the birds and the bees. But in black families and black communities, there's another talk. It's about life and death. So here's one mom's dream for her son. So tell us about Lance. What do you see when you look at your son? Oh, man, a ball of energy. A ball of energy? Uh, Intelligence, a light in a dark room, loves football, loves uh, basketball, loves soccer, and loves tennis. Yes, and just an amazing personality. The fear is that they won't come home. The fear is that they will, they're going to get that call. The 
fear is that the child is going to be another hashtag. Uh, I do not want him to grow up with anger in his heart to hate uh, and disrespect authority when it comes to uh, police uh, or anyone for that matter. Speak to Lance if this were Lance in the camera and you were having the talk with him, what would you say to Lance? I shouldn't have to have this conversation with my son. I shouldn't have to tell my son that there are going to be white people that don't like you, not because of your talent or not because of you. They're not going to like you because of your skin. I shouldn't have to have that conversation with my son. My son should be able to live a free and happy life as a child. My son has a heart full of love, and I feel like having that conversation with him will put hate into his heart with people, and I don't want that for him. I don't. I shouldn't have to have this, you know, deep conversation, but it's a must. Moving out back, down by the river. It's frustrating that nobody understands but us. with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers. You know, pets can really help out humans, especially now during this pandemic. And having a companion and comfort is more needed and appreciated as people are still at home. So the Atlanta Humane Society is busy, very busy. Cheryl Preheim reports. We've had so many people interested in fostering and adopting and um, sometimes more interest than animals, actually, funny enough. And I think that that's the feeling in shelters across the country, um, and especially here in Atlanta. New pet owners saying that the animals give back some comfort and connection that's been missing because of social distancing and working from home. And more people adopting and fostering has helped make space to take in and help the dogs evacuated because of the storms in the Gulf this week. These dogs came from Mississippi. The community has just rallied in an incredible way behind us during COVID-19. And for pet owners who are struggling during the pandemic, maybe lost their jobs, the shelter is helping with pet food donations and free veterinary care. All right, we're going to see you tonight on Up Late at 11 o'clock over on our sister station, 11 Alive. Chris Holcomb is going to have the latest on Hurricane Laura, and we're going to be joined by Jennifer Bellamy. More news and weather straight ahead. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Okay, Laura expected to make landfall within hours as it's gained strength as a Category 4 storm. The National Weather Service warning of a catastrophic storm surge, high winds and flash flooding. Nearly two dozen Texas counties already under a state of emergency and mandatory evacuations ordered in many coastal communities. Search and rescue teams on standby in Lumberton, Texas right now, but Warning, they will not be able to help anyone until after the storm passes. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb has been in the Storm Tracker Center tracking Laura for us all day. Chris, how about what can we expect as far as the time frame goes when, when this hurricane, this big, nasty, scary one hits for landfall? It's going to be making landfall within the next few hours. The center of the storm is still along the coast, but remember, or, or over water south of the coast, but remember, it is a very large storm. So parts of the Louisiana coastline are feeling the impacts of the rain and strong winds that are moving in. The strongest part of this is right here around the eye wall. That is still over water. That is the part that we think will be making landfall a little bit later on tonight, maybe between midnight and two in the morning. That official landfall with the center of the storm right up here along the western Louisiana coastline there close to the Texas line. And we do have a tornado watch in effect for much of Louisiana right now and even some tornado warnings. We had some bands here earlier that were prompting some tornado warnings. We do have a new tornado warning right here along the coast of Louisiana with that band that's moving in. But here is the center of that storm. It's moving north northwest at about 15 miles an hour. I'm plotting these latest tracks here for you showing about 70 miles away from the coastline, 90 miles away from Lake Charles. Lake Charles is inland a little bit, so it's 70 miles away. Uh, we're going to keep watching the storm as it moves in tonight. It's going to be a Category 4. It is nearing Category 5 strength. It's going to be really interesting to see when we get a new update in within the hour as to whether or not they're going to upgrade this to a Category 5. If it gets up to 157 miles an hour, that would be a Category 5 storm. We're watching this track very closely as it moves in uh, north of us in Kentucky. Kentucky on Saturday, and that could increase our rain chances and even some winds possible here, too. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. Chris, thank you. New tonight at 10 in the wake of the recent shooting of Jacob Blake by police in Wisconsin and protests demanding justice. A group is continuing the discussion of race and police brutality in the United States. Now, the event Healing America is part of a national tour today. They made a stop in Atlanta and Hope Ford has more. This is what healing looks like. A police officer, pastor, a man shot by police, and others gathered on stage to talk about love, race, and what America can do now. The tour, appropriately called Healing America, stopped in Atlanta Wednesday night, less than 24 hours after close to 150 people gathered downtown to protest the police shooting in Wisconsin. The demonstration was for Jacob Blake, the Wisconsin man shot seven times in the back by police on Sunday. I am saddened with the parallels between my story and uh, Mr. Jacob uh, Blake's uh, with him um, possibly losing his ability to walk. Leon Ford, who also survived a police shooting, took the stage alongside Ryan Tillman, a California police officer. There's a need for police, but at the same time, there's a dire need to also change policing. The problem ain't the police. The problem is the systemic issues within law enforcement and the justice system. Besides police reform, the group applauded several NBA teams for boycotting playoff games in solidarity for Blake. Atlanta rapper and mogul T.I. Harris stopped by to discuss the black dog and how it affects major corporations. Every dollar we spend is a vote mm -hmm. for a corporation, is a vote for a product, a vote for a brand. So for us to not utilize that strength that we all collectively have is leaving uh, is leaving food on the table. The panelists preached education and uniting to work on solutions that can revive hope, bring change, and start healing the nation. The moderator of the event said his goal is to build a relationship between citizens and police and reform policing into its purest and best form as an organization that prevents and solves crimes and reduces violence without over criminalization. A teenager now faces murder charges in connection to the shooting death of two people after violent protests in Wisconsin. Police arrested 17 year old Kyle Rittenhouse today in Antioch, Illinois. Officers say the shootings happened during the third night of violence in Kenosha after a police officer shot uh, Jacob Blake seven times in the back. 
Video shows Rittenhouse had an assault rifle and reports on his online activity show several photos of him with long guns and pro police or blue lives matter content. It's not clear if he will be charged as an adult. Athletes taking a stand tonight and players from the Atlanta Dream stood with their opponents. The Washington Mystics moments before the WNBA postponed all scheduled games tonight. The players decided to sit out in the wake of that Kenosha shooting where Jacob Blake was shot seven times in the back. He is now paralyzed. In Miami, Atlanta United's match with Inter Miami was called off. Major League Soccer postponed the remainder of tonight's scheduled games. It all began today with the NBA's Milwaukee Bucks. The Hawks coach is Lloyd Pierce, who watched it unfold with everybody else. Players walked off the court, left the building, refused to play. A boycott began as more NBA teams joined in following the Milwaukee Bucks. The NBA postponed all of Wednesday's games. Then others began to join in outside of the NBA, the WNBA. The consensus is to not play baseball and soccer on an incredibly emotional evening. Much of the sports night grew quiet. So where do we go from here? What can we do? What can we do right now? Atlanta Hawks head coach Lloyd Pierce is not in the NBA Orlando bubble, but if he had been, he knew what he would have done. We are 100 percent supportive of what our players are committed to doing today. The Hawks head coach is one of the most outspoken voices in the league and is part of the league's committee focused on diversity. I don't think anyone's speaking as an athlete right now. I think everyone's speaking as a father, as a brother, as a son. My concern is, is what am I doing to participate in safety for my daughter and my wife? And, and, and the players in Orlando are separated from their families right now. NBA players decided a boycott was a way to make their voices heard. Pierce supports them, but wants to find unity in how the league responds to social injustice. So know the strength of those guys being together and having these meetings and discussing these plans of actions of what they can do. That happens because they're still playing and they're in Orlando. Now as sports return, it begs the question, how long should this boycott last? We, we want our players to play. They want to play, um, but to understand there's a lot of things that are going on that are beyond our control. This isn't about this one event. This isn't about a, our one stance. This is about how do we change the policy. Pierce applauded the league's reaction, but he hopes that players continue to play and to have their platform. You know, let's not separate or remove ourselves. Uh, let's not isolate and try and do it on our own. The city of South Fulton is updating its use of force policy. The city council unanimously approved an ordinance that they hope will improve the safety of people in South Fulton as well as police. The resolution bans chokeholds, prohibits officers from firing shots at moving cars, and calls for warnings before weapon use along with other changes. The council also approved a policy for the drawing or discharging of officer weapons. DeKalb County Police investigating an early morning triple shooting that left one person dead. Police say the shooting happened around 3.30 this morning on North Indian Creek Drive in Clarkson. When police arrived at the scene, they found three people suffering from gunshot wounds. One man pronounced dead at the scene. Police are still searching for the gunman. Two people are charged with the murder of 83-year-old Barbara Gibson. Carroll County Sheriff Terry Langley says that Andrew James and, uh, and Amanda Sperry lived near Ms. Gibson. Investigators believe that robbery was the motive here. We think it's random. I don't even think they knew each other personally. We know they didn't know her, and we feel assured she didn't know them. But they did live close enough to know that she lived alone. Police found Gibson inside her home. She had been shot to death the night before Mother's Day. Sheriff Langley says the suspects scouted out Gibson's home. They did so days before the shooting, knowing that that's where they were going to go and what they were going to do. Now to the latest on COVID-19 here in Georgia. Our numbers are holding steady. And while that's better than watching them rise, public health officials warn that we really need these numbers to drop further to keep our children in school and keep nursing home residents safe. Today, about 2,200 new cases were reported, but testing was also down. If that trend continues, it will get a lot harder to spot outbreaks. If you've been exposed to COVID-19, you may no longer need to be tested for the virus. That's according to updated online guidance from the CDC on testing earlier this week. These guidelines ever changing over the last seven or eight months always are worth reading because things are ever evolving. 
and it now states that those who have been in close contact with an infected person don't necessarily need to do a test. After the break, we are taking your unemployment questions right to the commissioner of the Georgia Department of Labor. And the mental and emotional burden of fighting COVID-19 in New York's hospitals became too much for one local woman. But instead of giving up, she found another way to help. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave George. Complaints of unemployment check delays continue to flood into the 11 Alive newsroom. If you're in here with us, you see all of these emails. So many people have complaints, Jennifer. I mean, it's really staggering the calls, the emails. And this has been going on really since it began around February and March. Yeah, we are where Atlanta speaks. And 11 Alive's Tracy A. McPeer went straight to the commissioner of the Georgia Department of Labor to get answers. Without this income, I'm literally struggling counting pennies and nickels and dimes. Roland Morrison is far from alone, with record numbers of Georgians unemployed. Labor Commissioner Mark Butler says a record number of Georgians are also receiving unemployment. Roughly there's about 1.5 million people that are currently on unemployment. But many claim they've been waiting weeks and even months for a check. Butler says there are a few reasons why this is happening. One is eligibility. Uh, unemployment, by law and by rule, is meant uh, to go to people who lose their job through no fault of their own. That's the key word, through no fault of their own. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of people file unemployment right now, uh, especially during this pandemic, uh, that don't fall under that category. Another reason some people aren't getting a check is because they filed for and received unemployment last year and need to file a new claim. Individuals that have an old claim and then the claim expires, they have to reapply again once that claim expires. And a lot of folks are not catching that. And another huge problem right now, delaying the process is fraud. Uh, some of it is organized crime. Some of it is domestic and some of it is international. Butler admits the call volume is high, but says overall, most are getting what they need. Of all the people that currently have a valid claim and have asked for payment, 92% uh, of those individuals are actually getting payment. There are new tools online right now to help people answer questions like new links on the CARES Act and the lost wages assistance. Butler also says there are new fraud prevention tools like ID.me. He says if you get an email from ID.me, you want to pay attention because that means your account has been flagged. 11 Alive is here to help you get answers. So text us your unemployment questions to the number you see on your screen. 404-885-7600. You'll also find more resources on our website, 11alive.com. We have quiet weather here in North Georgia right now, and tomorrow is going to be a pretty dry day as well, with only a 20% chance for some showers to develop. But right now, 
all of that moisture is pretty much being used up here over in the Gulf Coast region where we have the hurricane. This is Laura and it's getting closer to the Gulf Coast. Now when I say closer to the Gulf Coast, I'm talking about the eye of the storm here. We're already seeing that rain shield uh, with a heavy rain and strong winds already moving into the Louisiana coastline. So already they're feeling the impacts of Laura, even though the center of the storm is still over water. Notice here these two red polygons right along the coast. That's in one of these bands right here. We have a couple of tornado warnings with that. So we're seeing tornado warnings there. We had bands earlier north and west of New Orleans that had some tornado warnings with them. But this is the main event right now that is happening. This is about to cross over near Lake Charles with some of that heavier rain. And then the center of the storm is going to continue moving northward. Here are a couple of those tornado warnings that we have in effect. Goes over to the Cameron area. And then here is the center of the storm. Look at the convection here. All of that red, orange, and yellow on the northern part of that eye wall. As the storm moves like this to the north northwest, it is that front right quadrant that is the strongest, and that's what we're seeing right now with that eye wall. It will continue moving to the north northwest. It is about 70 miles away from the actual coastline, about 90 miles away from Lake Charles, because Lake Charles is inland a little bit. So it is a strong storm that is moving in. Maximum sustained winds at 150 miles an hour. That is just below what will be a classified as a category Five storm. If it got up to 157 and higher, then it would be a category five storm. Take a look at what we're watching with this forecast track. This is again, this is based on the 8 p.m. advisory. We'll get a new one at 11. We really don't expect any major uh, differences here. We could see maybe with the 11 o'clock advisory, if this intensifies anymore to, as I mentioned, 157 or higher, then it could be a category five storm. But it, right now, the Hurricane Center thinking it'll stay at about 150 mile an hour winds when it makes landfall around midnight to two in the morning and then continuing as a tropical storm for Thursday into early on Friday, even up into Arkansas and then a depression as it moves from Tennessee over into parts of Kentucky. This is early Saturday morning here north of Atlanta up into Kentucky and at that location it's going to move very quickly to the north and east after that. So between Friday and early Saturday, that's going to start spreading some more moisture our way, even some breezes possible uh, during the day on Saturday, late Friday into Saturday as well. Not strong tropical storm force winds or anything, just breezy conditions. Look at this storm surge that's going to be coming in on the coast. We're talking 9 to 20 foot storm surges and Hurricane Center earlier said that was unsurvivable if you don't evacuate that. So here you can see a lower rain chances tomorrow low rain chances Friday, but then Saturday as the center of that storm moves to the north. That's where we'll see those higher rain chances and winds maybe 10 to 20 miles an hour on Saturday. So we got the 20% chance for rain Thursday up to 40% later Friday. Better chance for rain Saturday coming back down to 30% Sunday and Monday and then 30 to 40% chances Tuesday and Wednesday as well with highs in the 80s. Take a look at this weather wow and this one will make you say wow. This is a look of our um, satellite imagery of not only seeing the cloud tops but also the lightning surrounding the storm in some of those outer bands there as Laura is getting closer to the Louisiana and the Texas coast. We'd love to see your weather wow moments too. Often we get those from our 11 Alive Community Storm Trackers on Facebook. Just search 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Ask to become a member. You can be a part of this exclusive local weather community. Ahead in prime time, could buying stamps help save the United States Post Office? We verify those claims coming up in about 15 minutes. You are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. More people are turning to the companionship and comfort of pets during the pandemic, finding that having a special furry friend is appreciated a lot more now that people are spending more time at home. Cheryl Preheim talked to the Atlanta Humane Society and they are staying a lot more busy lately. We've had so many people interested in fostering and adopting and um, sometimes more interest than animals, actually, funny enough. And I think that that's the feeling in shelters across the country, um, and especially here in Atlanta. New pet owners saying that the animals give back some comfort and connection that's been missing because of social distancing and working from home. And more people adopting and fostering has helped make space to take in and help the dogs evacuated because of the storms in the Gulf this week. These dogs came from Mississippi. The community has just rallied in an incredible way behind us during COVID-19. And for pet owners who are struggling during the pandemic, maybe lost their jobs, the shelter is helping with pet food donations and free veterinary care. More happy families there. Well, I'm getting ready to head out for Up Late coming up in about 30 minutes on 11 Alive. So if you are up late, head on over and join us there for more news and weather then. Is it possible if I were to try to talk you into hanging around here for another Jeff, 30 minutes? Jeff, you say that every time. I know, but I don't want you to leave. We're, we're having too much fun tonight. Yeah, we are. Okay, all right. Maybe next time. Well, <laughs> all right. We'll see you on Up Late in a few minutes on 11 Alive. Here's what's coming up on the Big 36 where news is king. A woman has been stuck in India for months because of the pandemic, away from her mother who is fighting cancer. But 11 Alive and Bill Liss, the ever-present guru here of the world headquarters of 11 Alive, stepped in to help. We spoke to her about the moment she learned she is coming home. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing Night three of the Republican National Convention and Vi Vice President Mike Pence, the keynote speaker. We will hear from him in the next 30 minutes or so. One theme tonight, the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment being added to the U.S. Constitution. That's how second lady Karen Pence led off her speech. Because of heroes like Susan B. Anthony and Lucy Stone, women today like our daughters, Audrey and Charlotte, and future generations will have their voices heard and their votes count. Today, a historic statue unveiled in New York City's Central Park on Women's Equality Day. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. It is the park's first statue to honor women, featuring political pioneers Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and Sojourner Truth, 100 years after women were given the right to vote. Tonight, a group of women supporting President Trump's campaign came together to celebrate the role women have played in politics while encouraging more women to get involved. Natisha Lance has their story. In 100 years, women have contributed to our democracy. They've run for office on local levels, Congress, Senate, and even president. Women's voices have determined some of our toughest elections, voting at a higher rate than men for four decades. That's according to the Center for American Women in Politics. Women are the backbone of this country. Tonight, a group of women united to support the campaigns of President Donald Trump and Karen Handel, who is a candidate for Congress in Georgia's 6th District. They celebrated the strides women have made since given the right to vote 100 years ago, while also acknowledging it was years later before all women had that right. So we are thankful that we are all on equal footing today. Four years ago, it was white women who helped President Donald Trump clinch the election. Tonight, a group of his female supporters aim to empower other women to continue their support for the commander-in-chief. Our goal is to empower women to vote for the policies that this president has implemented. Over the last few years, women have made historic strides in politics. I think in both the Democratic and Republican Party, we've seen women work in issues as far as education and health care and to expand those um, policies. If the past 100 years are any indication, women and their role in politics can only go up from here. Women are a majority of the population in the United States, and so we're going to see more women be involved in politics and run for um, political office. Right now, 127 women hold seats in Congress, 101 women in the House, 26 our U.S. Senators, including George's Kelly Leffler. This week, we are taking a look at race in America. For most households, the talk is that often awkward conversation between parents and children about sex. But in African-American families, there is another talk that we in white families do not have. It is about life and death. Here is one mother's dreams for her son. Lance, what do you see when you look at your son? Oh, man, a ball of energy. A ball of energy? Uh, very intelligent, a light in a dark room, loves football. Uh, loves basketball, loves soccer, and loves tennis. Yes, and just an amazing personality. The fear is that 
they won't come home. The fear is that they will, they're going to get that call. The fear is that their child is going to be another hashtag. <laughs> I do not want him to grow up with anger in his heart to hate uh, and disrespect authority when it comes to uh, police uh, or anyone for that matter. Speak to Lance if this were Lance in the camera and you were having the talk with him, what would you say to Lance? I shouldn't have to have this conversation with my son. I shouldn't have to tell my son that there are going to be white people that don't like you, not because of your talent or not because of you. They're not going to like you because of your skin. I shouldn't have to have that conversation with my son. My son should be able to live a free and happy life as a child. My son has a heart full of love, and I feel like having that conversation with him will put hate into his heart with people, and I don't want that for him. I don't. I shouldn't have to have this, you know, deep conversation, but it's a must. Moving out back, down by the river. It's frustrating that nobody understands but us. An Atlanta nurse contracted COVID-19 while treating patients on assignment in New York City, and when she returned to Georgia, she couldn't go back to working in hospitals. She tells Hope Ford the psychological toll of battling the virus and treating patients put her on a much different life trajectory. I was taking care of the patient and I became the patient. Rochelle Dumas spent two months working in New York when COVID hit the city. I was working on the COVID ICU with the worst of the worst COVID patients. With limited protective supplies, she wore the same mask for days. In June, she contracted COVID. I ended up getting in my rental car and driving to the hospital where I worked at uh, to go get checked out because it was at that point beyond my control. In a month, her symptoms subsided and she headed back to Georgia, but she couldn't return to work in a hospital. Rochelle was emotionally drained. When I got back to the hotel, I couldn't sleep because I heard the ventilators. I heard the families crying while I was holding the iPad so they can watch their family member die because they can't come up there. But Rochelle is a nurse and still wanted to take care of people. So she started her own company, Onward Health Solutions and Education. Rochelle helps employers with COVID signage, provides deep cleaning and personal hygiene education. It feels good to put the truth out in the atmosphere, to help others, to make sure I'm putting a dent in, um, in that curve that we're trying to flatten. Turns out it's the exact thing she needed to fully heal herself. Tonight, an important follow-up to a story we first told you about a few weeks ago. A video art director from Flowery Branch journeyed to India on a movie assignment. Then COVID-19 hit India in a big way with a vengeance. Foreigners were stopped in their tracks with few, if any, options to get out. We asked our Bill Liss, who covers the airlines, worked for TWA during their heyday back in the 1960s, for a, a major international carrier to step in. Here's his report. Movie art director Sarah Pick has been trapped by the COVID-19 pandemic in Kolkata, India for almost six months. 8,500 miles from her home in Flowery Branch. She says she's tried everything, but can't get home. Cancel flights and closed Indian borders made travel impossible. It was just chaotic and it was, it had gotten to the point where it was a bit hopeless. I just felt like I was starting to think I was going to be in India forever. <laughs> I got to the point where I've lost hope. For Sarah, there's a special reason to eagerly want to get home. Her mom, Lisa Robbins, is a cancer patient 
and her brother Josh has Down syndrome and autism. Their caregiver recently left and Fick knows it was urgent to get home. After learning of Sarah's dilemma late last week, we stepped in. We contacted United's executives in Chicago and we explained Sarah's situation and that she could not get out of the country. In less than 24 hours, India's top United Airlines executive reached out to Sarah by cell phone and by email and immediately the wheels started turning. I received a, an email from him and then we talked, we spoke on the phone that he had booked a flight for me to return to the U.S. next week. I'll leave here on September 3rd and I'll arrive in the U.S. on September 4th. So I'm a bit blown away. It seems a bit surreal, like I'm going to wake up from a dream. This is the first time feeling some hope that I will be able to get home to my mom and my brother in months. Sarah simply can't imagine that it all happened within days after waiting nearly six months. It's been so overwhelming because I just didn't expect it because it's happened so quickly because everything, I've been waiting since March and then all of a sudden over a two, three day period of time, it's, I just was shocked. Sarah's mom and brother plan to be at Hartsfield Jackson when she arrives next Friday for what is going to be a joyous reunion. Since the pandemic virtually closed India in March, United Airlines has worked with the Indian government and the U.S. State Department to provide flights from India to the United States. Sarah is now on one of those flights and ready for that reunion. One of the main issues in any election is always the economy, and we know there are questions about stocks and investing. The closer we get to November, the bell is ringing for all of us. Joining me right now is Ted Jenkins, the CEO of Oxygen Financial. And with the election coming, Ted, how should we think about investing our money? Which direction should we go in your estimation? Well, let's talk about both forks in the road, Jeff. You know, if Biden happens to be elected president, I think people can look forward to investing in things like green energy, uh, infrastructure will be really good right now, electric cars will be good, materials, all those things that you're seeing and you heard from the DNC convention. And if Trump does get reelected, I would expect more of the same, Jeff. Uh, technology, social media, of course, banks, defense will all be good. But I want, think one thing people should watch out for at home is that tax policy will not change until 2021 if Joe Biden gets into the president's office. But one of the things he's talking about is raising capital gains tax from 20% to almost 40%, Jeff. And that could cause a lot of wealthy people to sell their stocks before the end of the year. That is something to keep an eye on. So no matter who gets elected here, which investments do the best? I mean, what, what, what do well, no matter if it's a Republican or a Democrat? Well, I mean, Jeff, I think these are interesting times because I think the one thing people can say is that the coronavirus is probably going to be around for the next 12 months. So one area I would look for are work from home type investments, Jeff. There's actually a fund right now that's called work from home or WFH. It's publicly traded, Jeff. And right now, 42 percent of the labor force is actually working at home. Telemedicine, Jeff, has exploded. Look, three out of four people say that they are comfortable with telehealth or telemedicine right now. There is a fund called EDOC, E-D-O-C, that allows you to invest in digital health. And for sure, Jeff, people are not spending money on travel, leisure, uh, hospitality. So right now, home improvement, the big box stores, people are spending money at home. They're putting a deck on their house or a new bathroom. Those are all great areas, in my opinion, to look at over the next 12 months. I was taking a look uh, online that gold is at an all-time high. Is that a good time to sell your gold? Well, Jeff, look, uh, gold actually crossed $2,000 an ounce this year. It's up 30% or so year to date. And yes, uh, if you have gold at home, just remember, you're not going to be able to get the exact price of what gold retails for if you go to a place like goldprice.org at $2,000 an ounce. But if you're going to sell it, you'll roughly get, I would say, 60 to 80 percent of your gold price. But if you're going to sell gold, it's at an all-time high right now. This would be, in my opinion, a decent time to sell it. Ted Jenkins, thank you. Always love having you with us. We appreciate your time and your expertise. All right. Thanks, Jeff. And we're waiting for the latest position update and intensity update from the National Hurricane Center. Right now, Laura bearing down on the Gulf Coast. Uh, the rain shield moving into Louisiana. The eye wall still off the coast with expected landfall within the next couple of hours. Stay with us. We'll have more on the latest track and any impacts on us. Yep. Coming up in sports, players from the WNBA, the NBA, and NLS decide 
not to work tonight to support social justice. On the field, the Braves try to take a doubleheader from the Yankees. We'll take you through it all coming up next. All that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters. The U.S. House recently passed a bill approving $25 billion to keep the Postal Service running, but a viral claim says the USPS funding problems could be solved. And it could be done if American adults just bought stamps. Here's Evan Kozlov with our Verify team and found it's actually a lot more complicated than that. It's not always easy to sort out what's real and what's not on social media. And that's why the Verify team is here. We take the time to do the research for you. A viewer asked us to verify this meme. If just half the adults in the U.S. bought a sheet of stamps, around $11, it would raise about $1.5 billion for the USPS. Hashtag save the USPS. So let's verify if half the adults in the US purchased a sheet of stamps, could that solve the USPS deficit? We started with some simple math. Using census data from 2019, about half of the US adults would come out to around 127.6 million people. And a book of 20 forever stamps costs $11. Multiply those together and that comes out to about $1.4 billion. And even if that was pure profit, 
that $1.4 billion would probably not be enough to save the USPS. Here are sources. The Postal Service's Fiscal Year 2019 Annual Report to Congress, their five-year strategic plan, and Postmaster General DeJoy's written testimony submitted to a House committee. In the strategic plan, USPS said the following. Since 2007, we have suffered 13 years of consecutive net losses totaling $77.8 billion, with an $8.8 .8 billion net loss in 2019 alone. And if you look at DeJoy's written testimony submitted to the House Committee on Oversight and Reform, he lays out this complicated issue, saying things like substantial declines in mail volume, huge legacy retiree health care and pension liabilities, and a statutorily imposed business model are all contributing to a, quote, dire financial position. So we can verify that this meme is false. While the $1.4 billion will certainly add to the revenue of the USPS, it's not likely to save the institution. It's a little more complicated than that. All right, now on to politics. Americans say they worry about the Postal Service changes, hindering efforts to count mail-in ballots. A third of national respondents plan to vote by mail, down from 36% two weeks ago. The biggest change came among Democrats nationally, with 51% planning to vote by mail, down 11 percentage points. Even with mail-in ballot concerns, two-thirds of battleground state voters approve of the Postal Service. Continuing to watch Hurricane Laura, we expect any moment now a new update to come in from the National Hurricane Center. And, and you know, this one's important. All of them are important, but this one's going to be the one that will let us know whether or not this is going to be upgraded to a Category 5. Right now, maximum sustained winds are at 150 miles an hour. That's a Category 4 storm. Anything 157 or higher is a Category 5. A Hurricane Hunter reconnaissance plane did detect a 158 mile an hour wind, but whether or not that was sustained enough for this to be upgraded to a Category 5, we don't know yet. So that's what we're going to find out with this latest update that came in. That could have been a wind gust that caused that stronger wind. Now, uh, I want you to know we've been talking about more than just the center of circulation, which is still over water. That's where we have those strongest winds. But the storm itself, the rain, the wind is moving in along the Louisiana coastline right now, and it's even prompting tornado warnings. These polygons that you see right here, right at in this band that's coming in on the coastline now, those are tornado warnings in effect uh, for these spots right here near Lake Arthur, uh, also just to the south of the Lake Charles area. This is the actual coastline and as you go down here, this is the eye of the storm and the eye wall around that. So when the center of this eye moves over land, that's when we'll have official landfall, which we think will be around midnight to two in the morning. It's still about 70 miles uh, off the coast here uh, where it's going to be moving in. We think near that Louisiana and Texas line. Here's the official track that we have right now, still at 150 miles an hour. We're waiting to see with this latest 11 p.m. advisory that'll come in very shortly to see if it's upgraded to a five. But you can see it coming in as a four, making landfall midnight to two in the morning, and then moving up toward the north through uh, Louisiana and Arkansas, still as a tropical storm through early Friday. And then it becomes a depression Friday during the morning and during the day, and then Saturday morning, a depression uh, into parts of Kentucky, and then it moves quickly up to the north and to the east. So Saturday, as that low is crossing well to our north, it's still going to open up a lot of moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico, and that'll give us a chance for some of those showers. I want to go over the Saffir Simpson scale for you. That is our hurricane scale, where when you have a Category 1 storm, it's uh, winds of 74 to 95 miles an hour. As it gets stronger with winds between 96 and 110, that's a category two. And then as you get up to a category three, 111 to 129, this storm, yeah, is between 130 and 156 right now at 150 miles an hour. So if it does get up to 157 or higher, that's when it'll be a category where it could be a category five storm, which is catastrophic damage. So we'll wait to see with that new update coming in. A 92 degrees for high tomorrow with only a 20% chance for showers, 40% chance here on Friday, then a 60% chance Saturday, then 30 to 40% chances next week with highs back to the 80s. Sports on this Wednesday night. The NBA is quiet moments before the schedule of playoff games were to begin today. The Bucks decided not to take the court and would boycott following the shooting of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin. As more teams joined in, the league postponed all of the games tonight. 
Hours later, the Bucks stood outside their locker room and they collectively read a statement. Despite the overwhelming plea for change, there has been no action. So our focus today cannot be on basketball. We are expected to play at a high level, give maximum effort and hold each other accountable. We hold ourselves to that standard, and in this moment, we are demanding the same from lawmakers and law enforcement. Others joined in with the NBA's boycott. The Brewers decided they would not play their game against the Reds, and the WNBA postponed its slate of games tonight, too, beginning with the Atlanta Dream. The team's center released a statement on behalf of the league as the players wore shirts that they had made themselves, spelling Blake's full name with images of bullet wounds on the back. The consensus is to not play in tonight's slate of games and to kneel, lock arms, and raise fists during the national anthem. We stand in solidarity with our brothers in the NBA and will continue this conversation with our brothers and sisters across all leagues and look to take collective action. Atlanta United and Major League Soccer joined the boycott later in the evening. The players posing for a unified picture then packed it up and went away. Team president Darren Eel said tonight is more than about a match and they stand with their players. It's not known when or if this game will be made up. One of the most outspoken leaders regarding diversity in the NBA is the Hawks head coach Lloyd Pierce. We spoke with him about today's boycott and where the league and all of sports now goes from here. We, we want our players to play. They want to play. Um, but to understand that there's a lot of things that are going on that are beyond our control. It's just another advancement in this conversation. And we're tired of actually talking about it. We're tired of, of saying, making the statements. Um, and, and that's where we are. We want to see action now. We, and we want to be a part of the action. And then we want to be a part of the, the, the next phase because uh, this isn't going to be it either. I will support whatever comes of this. Um, I think that's the most important part of it. Uh, I do know being together is our strongest voice and, and together as players, together as coaches, together as owners, together as a league is, is the strongest voice that we have. Now in Major League Baseball, Braves and Yankees in a doubleheader, two seven-inning games. Braves won the first game 5-1, and in game two, bottom of the sixth, Freddie Freeman to the track to the wall gone. Gives him a 2-1 lead. 2-1 is the final. Two great pitching performances tonight from Ian Anderson and Mick Freed. And the Braves get the doubleheader sweep at Truist Park. Could have used that. Uh, I'm not even going to go there. We won't even talk about that Yankee Braves World Series from a number of years ago. Sorry I brought that up. All right, we'll take a break. We're back right after this. Or subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. 
Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. We will continue to watch Laura. We just got that latest advisory in is still a category four storm with maximum sustained winds at about 50, 150 miles an hour, uh, making landfall in just the next little while. We have the storm, as I mentioned, 150 mile an hour winds. It is about 75 miles south of Lake Charles, Louisiana and uh, southeast of Port Arthur, Texas. It'll be, <coughs> excuse me, making landfall very soon along that Louisiana coastline. Tomorrow, our rain chances are only at 20% and then 40% chances on Friday. Our rain chances Saturday are going to be higher with some breezes possible as the remnants move well to our north and then drying out for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with lower rain chances. 150 mile per hour winds is incomprehensible. I don't think there's any structure that we human beings make that will withstand that. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Prime.